This is a harder mean value theorem problem. Well, not harder, but it's a little bit tricky. So we want to find the values of C guaranteed by the mean value theorem for this function, sine x, on this interval, such that the derivative of f at C is equal to this expression here. Now, what does the mean value theorem say? This is basically saying that the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line. Or it's also saying that the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change. Maybe one day I'll make a video on uh, what the mean value theorem means, because it's actually really, really cool. OK, so solution. So all we have to do is find c. That's all we have to do. And we have to find c by solving this equation. right? So let's take the derivative. So f prime of x. Well, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. All right. Now we just have to compute the expression over here. Now this is, this is f prime of c. I'm just calling it x and not calling it c, but it's the same thing. All right. So here, this is our a and this is our b. So let's do it. So it'll be f of pi over 2 minus f of negative pi over 2 all over pi over 2 minus negative pi over 2. Really, this problem, all you do is write this stuff down and, and then just solve. So let's see. f of pi over 2 is the sine of pi over 2 and then minus sine of negative pi over 2. On the bottom here, we just have pi over 2 plus pi over 2, right? Two negatives. So that gives us pi. Now, sine of pi over 2. Well, think about it. Let's see. Here's the unit circle. Sine is the y-coordinate. So at pi over 2, the y-coordinate is 1. And at negative pi over 2, the y-coordinate is negative 1. So it's minus negative 1 all over pi. There it is, 2 over pi. All right, so on the left-hand side, we have f prime of x, or in this case, I wrote c. So cosine x. And on the right-hand side, we, we worked it out, right? We worked out the right-hand side. It's just 2 over pi. At this point, you go to your calculator, right? 2 over pi is not something nice. So if you go to your calculator, you get that x is well, approximately equal to, well, it's equal to the inverse cosine of 2 over pi. And so your calculator will give you something like 0.8. 881, uh, something like that. And that's actually correct, 0.881. Now here's the trick. Is there another value in our interval that, you know, for which this equation is true? All right, so let's think about it. Our interval was negative pi over 2, pi over 2. So the question is, is there another value of x such that cosine x is equal to 2 over pi? Well, let's think about the unit circle, 0.811. That's about right here. You might say, well, how do you know that? How do you know 0.881 is right there? Ah, because I know that pi over 2 is about 1.57, right? Uh, is that cheating? Not really. You can put it in your calculator. Pi over 2 is approximately 1.57. That makes sense because pi is approximately 3.14. Anyways, we're here. So where else is the cosine function positive, right? Because this is a positive number. Where else is it positive on the unit circle? Well, cosine is the x-coordinate on the unit circle. So it's positive over here. And so the other angle will be negative 0.881. So the two answers are x is approximately equal to 0.881, and x is approximately equal to negative 0.881. And that's what makes this problem super tricky. Now, these should be c's, but I just called them x. No big deal. Uh, I hope this helps someone out there. This is a pretty sneaky problem.